This is Esther. And this is Maria. And together we are... The, the Consort Counselors! Today we would like to talk about one of the little but very precious gems of the recorded repertoire, the opening sonatina of Cantata number 106 by Johann Sebastian Bach. This is a funeral cantata, which has the name Gottes Zeit is the Allerbeste Zeit. But you may also know the alternative name, which is Actus Tragicus. Bach probably composed this cantata when he was only 22 years old and he was working as an organist in Mühlhausen. Yes, and the instrumentation he chose is very, very special. Uh, he chose four singers two recorders, two viols, one violoner, and basso continuo. This choice of instrumentation has a lot to do with musical eloquence and symbolism. Let's look into the opening sonatina. The viols play a short introduction that leads into the entrance of the recorders. After that, they provide a calm accompaniment in ongoing eight notes, together with the bass. We can easily associate this sound with bliss, with heaven. The recorders, on the contrary, have a very different role. They represent the pain that we all must endure in life. On the one hand, they are representing the fragility of human life. On the other hand, also the suffering that is uh, inherent to human life. Bach does this in a very clever way, by letting the two recorders play in unison very often. And playing in unison is very difficult and therefore quite fragile. It's really easy to lose the magic of intonation, perfect intonation. But in unison playing, and of course in life, we always strive for perfection. And to express the idea of pain, Bach uses alternating unisons with minor and major seconds with dissonances that create friction and suggest that feeling of suffering. Let's hear that. In our interpretation, we try to achieve unisons that are as perfect as possible to create an even bigger contrast with the painful dissonances. And so today we bring to you a series of exercises based on the sonatina and focusing on unison playing and also on the subtleties of playing with these beautiful but painful dissonances. Look through the piece and find out which pitches you need to play together in unison. In this case, the range goes from the low B flat up to the high D. Besides all tones in the F major scale, we also need E flat and F sharp. Create then a prelude in which you go through all those pitches starting on a middle F and moving as much as possible in stepwise motion. Then divide the prelude in groups of four notes each, as you see here. First, practice each of those fragments uh, with both players using main fingering, so the regular fingering that you would use to play that tone. Now Maria will play main fingerings for all the pitches and I will try to mix into her with alternative fingerings.
If you are not really acquainted with uh, alternative fingerings and you are looking for tips which fingerings to use in such an exercise, you can visit this website and then go to the section on the left column called Piano and Forte fingerings. The ones marked as piano are all good for mixing when practicing unisons. Good luck! Instead of writing your own prelude like we have just done, you can also practice long notes and unisons just by following the actual contour of the piece. And how to do that? Uh, play the first and the third beat of every bar and keep that note for a long time. And in that way you will have a sort of overview of how the piece is developing. We show you the first few bars and then if you are practicing you can of course continue and do the whole piece like this. Also, make sure that you start a note together and that you end it together and lift it nicely up in the air. During the sonatina, we move around certain pitches all the time. In the first phrase, for example, we start with F and we come back to F more often. We have an exercise so that you can practice that and that is the following. Hester is going to keep along F for the first bar and I am going to play the actual notes that are written. And in that way, I can see if I'm really coming back to the same F all the time, and also how my other intervals are in relation to Hester's notes. Then later, when you actually play the piece with an ensemble, you have the organ uh, to have the same function during the piece all the time. If that goes well, swap around. Let's now look at the best way to play our dissonances. I'm going to keep an F and Maria is going to alternate between F and E and trying to find the best friction. I'm going to do that, uh, first of all, with two different phrasings. One is I group F and E, so that means that we get a sort of little sighing figure, F into the E. And then I'm going to play four times the E going into the F with the feeling of an upbeat. And let's also experiment with dynamics. Maria is going to hold the long F and I'm going back and forth between F and E. Uh, and I will try to make my E gradually softer by choosing different fingerings for the E. In the dissonant passages, Bach actually alternates the dissonances from one part to the other and that gives us the opportunity to interact and also to cooperate to make a certain musical shape. And we are going to practice that from halfway bar 11 into bar 13 and we try to grow in intensity. And now let's also try the opposite. We play the same fragment, we start in tens, but we sort of disappear into the ending. And now let's not agree upon any development, but let's react to each other on the spot. Thank <laughs> you. 
Today's 30 seconds tip is a fantastic resource if you like the music of Johann Sebastian Bach. In 2013, the Dutch Bach Society started a very ambitious project, which is called O of Bach. And that name says it all. The project is recording professionally on video with top performers the complete works by Bach. Every Friday they release a new performance, uh, recently for example the complete uh, Johannes Passion. And at the moment there are already 237 of the pieces uh, released and you can expect another sort of 1500 coming in the uh, next few years. Besides the performances, you can find interviews with the musicians, you can even see reactions from the audiences and background information on every piece. We hope that you will enjoy listening and learning about Bach through this wonderful website, All of Bach. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have questions or comments for us, contact us here. Bye-bye. See you next time. See you next time.